Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All streamed directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. It's Monday, June 27th, 2011. This is episode 14 of All About Android, your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Eileen Rivera. I'm Jason Howell. (laughs) Wow, and I'm Ron Richards. (laughs) (laughs) Well, dang it, that was not clean at all. You didn't go with the flow there, Ron. I couldn't help but notice. (laughs) Ron just paused. You didn't stutter your name. (laughs) Did they really screw up their names? I don't know what was going on for a moment there. <laughs> Jason, you were, no, you were, fine. No, you were, you were like, oh, Skype just hiccuped. <laughs> Are we starting over again? <laughs> <laughs> no, let's keep it. Yeah, it let's keeps keep us, it. Uh, it keeps us uh, original <laughs> and, uh, as we step over our uh, name. Live podcasting. Name. <laughs> yes. Hey, this week we're going to predict the state of the smartphone market in 2012. Uh, Jason has a new phone. We're going to reveal that and who won the bet, if we won the bet. I feel, uh, I feel like there's a bit of a swerve coming up here I with know, Jason and the new I phone know, bet. I know. I know. I can't I wait to get to that. shenanigans. There's a little Me bit too. of an asterisk <laughs> involved, um, yes, for sure. I uh, modded my Nook. Ooh. Ooh. Stepping into I the mod I had a project community. this weekend I'm very happy about. Um, and uh, this week's arena is about backup apps. I yeah. had a song to sing, but I wasn't going to do it. <laughs> I decided not to. I got afraid. You got, far more, excited. You, you got far more excited for backup apps than I've ever seen anybody. <laughs> back it up, back it in. Let me begin. Sorry. Okay. There, um, there we go. I, it it kind of lost how it, did, and then I came back. <laughs> how did you know that that is the title that I've already selected? It's no! in Final Cut upstairs right now. Back it up, back it in. So I guess now it has to be the title of today's <laughs> nice. episode. There well, we go. All right. Good one. Uh, how are you guys? Do it. <laughs> doing, doing. It's pretty, Monday. I've like good. I'm loaded on caffeine right now, so I'm like, yeah, let's start the show. Right on. Well, let's start the show. Let's get right into it. We'll uh, go right on to news. <laughs> iPhone, Android. Ron, what do you know? Well, considering uh, after our, our uh, lively discussion on the last episode about iPhone and Android and, and the pros and cons from a developer standpoint, I thought it was really interesting to see this article pop up on GigaOM, um, which is responding to an article that was up on Fortune, uh, which was talking about uh, the iPhone basically eating into Android's quote-unquote dominance. Um, and this is, I, I find this very funny because I love these kind of analysty wannabe blog posts that try to freak you out with numbers. Um, but basically, and charts, yeah, charts exactly. and graphs. It's like exactly. that, that chart's kind of like Zoom goes the uh, and well, no, it's okay. <laughs> Zoom yeah. goes the Android. Zoom goes but, the Android. <clears throat> but yeah, so essentially, the 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 uh, the main hypothesis of the piece was that Charlie Wolf of Needham and Co. noted that Android's market share of smartphone sales in the U.S. fell for the first time ever from 52.4 percent to 49.5 percent in the first quarter, and this is the first time Android's ever had a loss. And Wolf basically believes that this is the beginning of a trend that is leading towards the iPhone regaining its dominance. Um, and now that the iPhone is available on Verizon and other characters, it's eating into Android's market dominance. And that with the upcoming, uh, I feel like the iPhone 5, like we all assume it's, we know it's coming, but it never hasn't been announced. But anyway, but the impending release of the iPhone, iPhone 5 will continue to eat into the Android's uh, market share and that everyone will just be using iPhones by the time uh, we, in a year from now. So no, I added that last bit, but it's just, that's pretty much, yeah. That's pretty much what he just yeah. said. It's so hard exactly. to believe that that is really what's going to happen because I don't know, just based on the emails that we get every day, there's so many new people that are jumping from iPhone to Android. So um, there's, I think there's a big share of those people as well. I don't know. I just, it's fine. I find this hard to believe is um, 
at all. But I, th- um, I think I think it's a I think it's a question of numbers and volume. And mm-hmm. the fact is that the va- okay, un- totally understood that uh, the iPhone came to Verizon and that was a whole new bunch of customers. And the iPhone did have it. If you look, go back to the chart, the iPhone did have a bump up in first quarter, which is to be expected when it gets introduced to a whole new set of carriers. But when you're talking about the long term uh, spread of uh, of the handsets. You're looking at iPhone, which even if iPhone comes out, what is the price tag? Five ninety nine, mm-hmm. four ninety nine. If you're lucky, not everybody can afford that. Meanwhile, there are so many Android handsets out there. You can walk into any T-Mobile or Verizon store and walk yeah. out with an Android device for ninety nine bucks. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think I, I think that I, I think that this guy was a little short sighted in accounting for that. He was kind of putting all the eggs in the iPhone 5's basket and saying this is the death of Android. Um, as well, it's bloggers. That's what they do. I should know. I'm one of them. But still. <laughs> uh, I mean, we're still in a recession, right? I mean, not every, like you said, we cannot afford uh, big phones like that. I mean, we're in the industry that, you know, we're testing, we're buying things, you know, it's our job to do that. But, you know, you look at everybody else out there who isn't, I can't say the same for them. You know, they're really, really choosy about their phone. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's even a big share of people who've been emailing us about prepaid phones. We haven't, we haven't talked about. So uh, a lot of those are Android. What's that? They, they, They make Android burners? Really? Like burner phones. phones. Like yeah, you phones, saw the wire, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> the burner phone, yeah. I'm sure if they don't, they, they probably will soon. That's a powerful really burner look phone. Today being a drug dealer with a burner phone that can also run Angry Birds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would just get you into trouble, I would imagine. He makes it, he does make a really good point, and this is something that I thought when, you know, it was all it was all leading up to, okay, finally they've announced the iPhone and it's coming out on Verizon, and oh no, what's going to happen when it finally, you know, happens is Android on Verizon going to take a huge dip because suddenly all those people that were just kind of like, you know, appeasing themselves with uh, with Android, are they going to finally jump ship and go to the iPhone? Well, that was, you know, when was that? That was February, March? February, I think. Right, yeah. right around then when that announcement happened. And, I mean, all those all those people are probably sitting pretty, just kind of hanging tight. At least the people that would probably mm-hmm. jump ship to iPhone the, the ones that realize that Apple updates their phones every year, they're not, you know, they're probably not going to buy right into almost immediately an outdated iPhone. They're going to wait until the next rev if and when it comes. And like you said, Ron, one hasn't even been announced officially yet, so we don't really know that for sure. And, but and, I, I have no doubt that when the new iPhone comes out on Verizon, there will absolutely be a, a dip from what it was the previous quarter. I don't know if it's necessarily a 100% change of course leading to the death and destruction and doom of Android forever because of this. Oh, there well, goes and our and show. And that's, and that's <laughs> yeah, the thing. If you, yeah, I know, exactly. We're going to have to cancel the show. But if you look at the chart, like 52.4% dip down to 495 So that's like what, like 3% maybe? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. that's hardly, that, that's, that, that's a percent deviation. That's hardly anything yeah. to get upset about. You know what I mean? Like that's not, I mean, it, it, I would be concerned if it had like a, a meteoric drop like from 52.4 percent to 32 you know like if it dropped like that yeah. dramatically but it's 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 going to be the ebb and flow and i think this is what's going to happen is we're going to see android and iphone do this over the next couple of years as more people people yeah. people don't know about android as much although the commercials and all stuff like that is becoming i feel as if droid and android right. is very much in the public I think, persona i think it absolutely is well, look at yeah. march and april there i mean that was like 10 percent. it seems like 10 yeah. percent jump so I don't know. I mean, uh, whenever I see any kind of, you know, analyst come out with charts and graphs and whenever there's numbers, it's really hard to take anything as, as, I don't know, as fact or, or, you know, as like solid evidence that, you know, this is X is going to happen. And and that's the the problem with volatile. and that's the problem with these analysts and these bloggers and stuff like that is that I mean we're talking about it. They he wrote they they both the the analyst wrote a good post and the and blogger on Google wrote a good article. It's an Android market share losing, iPhone gaining. You know, like that's going to get you page views. And if you really look deep into it, it's kind of like well, this is just kind of natural market stuff. And let's see let's see what the Q2 numbers look like. Let's see what the Q3 numbers mm-hmm. look like before you see a trend. A tr- one quarter does not make a trend. Well, and really when you when you really take a look at the just the provide the manufacturing and the OS, the phone OS is out there right now. Android's probably the least of the worries to fall to the side of iPhone. You've got a lot of other platforms that are doing a lot worse. They're worse off right now as in comparison to Android, which like like we've talked about many times, it just has this meteoric kind of rise going on right now. It might dip a little bit, but it's in no it's in no like position to die off completely when you compare it to, you know, something like Nokia or, mm-hmm. you know, Windows Windows Phone 7 
which has yet to really prove itself. And I, I, I don't know. I just I mean, don't Blackberry's see Android the one, as being the, the yeah. one that's in the bad position. Blackberry is the one really in trouble. So. Yeah, Blackberry is um, the one that's dying. Yeah. I do got to admit, it's funny because we always talk about how we're in this kind of echo chamber in this little bubble in San Francisco mm-hmm. and technology and things like that. But I got to admit, over the, the past couple of weeks, I've been traveling. and I was in New York and, and I was hanging out with some people who definitively are not tech people or not in our kind of circle. And I saw more flip phones like <laughs> and, I, and like and I and I literally had and I was with a friend of mine who's also fairly tech savvy. And he's just like, people still rock those. It's like and it's kind of funny because you forget that like the rest of the world doesn't give a shit about or doesn't give a crap about all these <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. doesn't but doesn't give a crap about all these uh, apps and things like that. They just want a phone that lets them call their wife to tell them they're going to yeah, be late for dinner. Yeah. And that's really all it is. And, you know, and, you know, so I'd be curious to see what the what the flip phone or the Motorola or LG, whatever the, you know, like the non OS phones, what those sales are like. Uh, non smartphone. Yeah. Right. There's a yeah. worldwide chart too um, on the uh, uh, the Fortune the CNN article, and um, Android's going up in that. Am I looking at it correctly? I think I am. I think what's wrong here is oh, they have the, the name, the, the month, they have the month wrong. Anyways, Android's going up worldwide, and so is iPhone slightly. And then, of mm-hmm. course, it's yeah. it's just a little different. When you look at the world yeah. um, shares, the, you know, then it's not so doom and gloom in a way. So um, it just depends on how you look at it, I guess, too. These are all quarters. There we go. This is what I'm looking at. This is what you're looking at, right? Uh, there were nope, a couple of things nope. on there. I'm looking at figure five. It's the bottom of the Needham article. There. Uh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay, there we go. See that? See, look at the yep. pink is Android. That's still up. Look at that. Well, and, and it's look- been nothing but up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So... Yeah. so. I don't know. I mean, take take what you want. Um, I, I think the only other thing is, you know, we were going to try and kind of give our own predictions. If we yeah. went around the table and did our own predictions of what the smartphone market would be, you don't have to give numbers. You could just say, or if you want, you can give numbers. Um, based on these operate the iPhone, BlackBerry, Windows, Nokia, Android, what do you guys think? Oh, boy. You can just guess. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, in what? In like a year from now? Yeah, or, a year from now. For- a year from now, I think I, I think that uh, Android and iPhone will be very neck and neck. It'll be very parody. I think it's going to be whether whether or not it's you know thirty percent, thirty percent, or forty percent, forty percent. But it's clear that you have two players, and BlackBerry is going to be the the distant third, and then everything else will be behind that. I think that's really what I mean. It's going to be similar to what's going on now, but um, whether or not the dominance is you know fifty forty or anything, I think it's going to be much closer. It's going to be like a very thin line between the two. So. I'm going to say it's going to stay exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how I feel oh, too. Oh, yeah. dang. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry that we can't um, but, it'll be on different platforms, but, but yeah, uh, I don't think it changes a whole lot in a year. Uh, window, and Windows Phone 7 is still yeah, it's pretty still, young. Mm-hmm. Uh, there aren't a, a huge amount of devices with Windows Phone 7. So. I don't think Windows Phone 7 is a contender at all. No? Well, I think at all. You know, they don't even account for WebOS. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't really. There are a lot of people who like right WebOS. Now, like, no, totally. Sure, there are a lot of people who like WebOS, but can you get it? I mean, that's I the. Know. People were the, asking me to, you know, create a show for WebOS, so I. All seven of them. <laughs> Sorry, that was all. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know we're in the Android here, so we're safe. But you know, if you leave this show, it might be a little bit different. So I'm not going to say anything. But um, I didn't really feel the need to rush and create a WebOS show. That's all I'll say. But, not yet, anyways. It still has to prove itself as a, as so a platform before it has that kind of groundswell. Yeah. I would say. So let's say let's say Apple comes out and in September announces the iPhone five. But and and iPhone five, it's it's amazing. It's lighter. Yeah. It's faster. It's blah blah blah. It does your laundry? Do, <laughs> do, you, do you think that has an impact uh, within the next year? Um. Yeah, it'll put a dent a little bit. Any uh, more but of I a think, dent? Any, but any more of a dent than the what the iPhone four did? I mean, like that's the thing. I don't is that, know like, about that because I think you know as we progress, there are more and more Android phones. Like when that Samsung Galaxy two S comes out. Yeah. <sighs> But, 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 <laughs> but, yeah, that, but here's the thing about here's the thing about the iPhone. What they've done is they've introduced unless they, unless they they innovate and come out with the iPhone Nano or whatever it is that we've mm-hmm. heard, which is a smaller version. But if they just keep iterating on iPhone five, iPhone six, mm-hmm. it reminds me of back years ago when I used to work for my dad in the computer business, and he said, "Listen," he said, and I think I've said this before on the show. There are computers that cost five hundred dollars. There are computers that cost a thousand dollars, and computers that cost two thousand dollars. And what you get for those price points shifts over every. 18 months or whatever the whatever Moore's 
laws or whatever mm-hmm. the thing is. And so what you're getting with Apple is you're just getting the new greatest thing is five ninety nine, and then the old greatest thing now can get be gotten for two hundred fifty dollars, or you can get an iPhone three GS for like ninety nine bucks, right? I mean, like they're just shifting the models along. They're shifting the 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 technical specifications along those price points. So really, I don't think they're shaking anything up. When you go to buy a new iPhone, you're going to get the latest and greatest of what there is, whether it's an iPhone 4 or 5, doesn't matter. The question is how many people on the iPhone 4 will feel the need to upgrade to the iPhone 5, but that's not going to dent into market share. Hmm. Right? So, yeah. you know, so, but, but then there but are those Verizon people that yeah, are holding that's, back. Exactly. That's what Jason was making. Yeah, but they were, holding, they were holding back until, until it came to Verizon. And, and, and what, 3% dipped into it? Yeah, but the, I mean, it's it's just the the fact of it's not the newest hardware. Like, yes, you could get in right now, but you're almost immediately putting yourself at, at all, into the thing of, antiquated the, hardware. That was February. Are we any closer to a new version of the, of the latest sti- hardware? No, you're right. We still don't know. But there's yeah. but their history of Apple tell, sure. tells a yeah. lot of those specific people. Now, mind you, a lot of people don't even you know don't even recognize the fact that Apple has a year you know a yearly kind of rollout schedule with their mm-hmm. devices and stuff. So this wouldn't even. Right, they're just gonna buy the. They're going to buy whatever the top. That, that's the point I'm making. They're just going to buy whatever's out. And un- unless Apple introduces another flavor of phone, mm-hmm. I don't really think they're going to dramatically shift the market share that much. That's my point. So yeah. hmm. now they could come out with this with the iPhone Nano, and I'll have to eat my words, and they'll totally eat into Android. Yeah. And you know, but we'll see. There so. are there are murmurings that that is uh, coming up. An I iPhone know. Nano, oh, so no. we'll, we'll, that we will be able to check back in with you, Ron, and see <laughs> how accurate, accurate we'll, you we'll, are. We'll come back in the fall. We'll check with you That's back. That's right. In the fall. All right, let's move on to. Well, I'm I'm pretty excited about this. Let's move on to hardware. Hmm. Want to know why I'm excited? Yes, I want to know why you're excited. I have this right here. <gasps> it is a Ooh. HTC Thunderbolt. So, wow. So um, we both lost. Yes. <laughs> we both well, lost, Well, right? that, de- that depends. That really just does depend. Yeah, let's so, explain what, why you got the Thunderbolt. And I was shocked um, that that got – you had a tweet. A tweet uh, last yes. week, like which one you should get, and that one overwhelmingly won. Um, so yeah, so uh, first of all, I should give credit where credits due. Vance fourteen on Twitter was the one that hit me up at the end of last week and was like, "Dude, why don't you upgrade your upgrade your wife's phone and then just use it until the the phone comes out and then give her that one?" And I was like, "Okay." In- initially, I thought about it. And I was like, "Well, that's kind of rude. I'm going to upgrade your phone and then I'm going to use it." But it's kind of like when Homer bought Mars. The, the bowling ball and had Homer etched into it. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Totally. I thought it was rude initially, but then I was like, you know, Stacy, my wife, Stacy, she does not care. Like, she yeah. really does not care. She has the Motorola Droid. Hmm. She uses it for email, very light browsing. She has no problems with it. It's stock. You know, I never mm-hmm. rooted it for her. She really has no need for anything uh, advanced in her phone. She really doesn't care. She's perfectly happy with it. So I, you know, I didn't say I was going to do it. I just, you know, brought it up in conversation. So what, what do you think? Like, would you be okay with that? And she was like, are you kidding? I don't care. I get a new phone out of it eventually. And I was like, well, okay then. I guess the, <laughs> I guess the problem is solved. So it's not really my Thunderbolt. <laughs> you know I have it on loan for my wife. As someone who does all about Android, it's good that you've upgraded your phone. Because yes. Ron and I don't need to tease you anymore when something happens like ADW Launcher. <laughs> Not which working. I, yeah, I, which I did get hit up by some people on Twitter who said, oh, that was totally ADW. That wasn't your phone. But, you know, it could have been anything. Who knows? But um, so, yeah, so I have the uh, the little HTC Thunderbolt here. So uh, how do you like it? Uh, here, I'll pop that screen on, I hope. It's a did, pretty phone. Did it's I a totally pretty power it off 3. Did you power it off? There I guess I did. Okay. Nice. HTC. Well, I'll go ahead and talk about it and see how fast <laughs> it boots up. I don't know how I turned it off, but anyways, um, I I actually really like it a lot. The the common complaint about the HTC Thunderbolt, obviously, it's the first LTE phone on Verizon, and uh, the big complaint is battery life, and that actually is something that's very important to my wife. Mm. She wants it to you know power through the day or whatever. But when we went through the the two choices that we kind of narrowed it down to were the HTC Thunderbolt and the Droid Charge, the Samsung Droid Charge, and she just thought the charge was kind of plasticky, which it is. The mm. Thunderbolt mm-hmm. is really kind of durable and tough, mm-hmm. and especially mm-hmm. coming from the Motorola Droid, she just wants it to feel solid in the hand. Yeah. Um, and you know, we just kind of she played around, you know, with both of them of 
very little bit and she was like you know what i don't care you pick and <laughs> she put the onus on me that's how much she really didn't care and i was like all right well then i guess i'd go thunderbolt because um, mm-hmm. i've heard good things i put a call out on twitter and overwhelmingly people mm-hmm. were, were saying go with the thunderbolt um and so far i've really liked it like, like i said the battery life with lte is horrible mm-hmm. uh first day i was running lte and after like two hours it was yeah. wow was yeah i mean gone. that's what i've heard about that's the biggest knock with this phone is the battery life right mm-hmm. other than that I'm, I'm guessing most of the features and how fast it is it's pretty sweet yeah, no, it's uh, it's very sweet. It's super fast, especially in comparison with uh, my Motorola Droid. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything's super snappy. There we go. Now it's now it's coming on. That wasn't a horrible reboot. Ooh, time. look how pretty that is. Um, and I, you know, almost immediately, you know, installed my Launcher Pro and mm-hmm. kind of re. Uh, you know, refit it up to match the way my customization was on the old phone. So again, it feels Look kind of fast. Like, it's snappy. Yeah, there, it's super yeah. snappy. Um, one thing I will say right off the top is like the screen is huge, it, it, big for me, anyways. Four point three, and uh, I noticed with Launcher Pro the the feature that we talked about, uh, where you can fit more icons, you know, on a you know more icons per row and per column, um, actually really comes to use here because good good use here because if you don't do that you have you know in this center area i'd have four icons on two different rows and you just feel like there's a lot of wasted space so with launcher pro i was able to kind of use that space and and really kind of throw all of my favorite apps there and fit more on the screen and have it not be so tiny that it's unusable but i almost immediately downloaded this lte um LTE on off switch which looks a little intimidating and I'm really surprised that there is no widget for this yet but this allows you to go in here and and turn off LTE if you want and since I did that on Saturday battery has been fantastic I mean it lasts through the day I'm on 3G all the time but quite frankly like I I don't know. I don't know about you guys. I always kind of felt 3G was fine. Mm-hmm. Yes, LTE is faster, and faster is great in all in all senses of of anything when it comes to smartphones and and speed and stuff like that. But um, not if it means a two hour battery life. Um, and then you know everybody's also saying we'll get an extended battery, and uh, you know, shouldn't have to do that. You shouldn't need you to should, get. I'm, you shouldn't know. have to do that. I don't know if it adds like girth to the phone. I think it does. Actually. It probably yeah. does. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I would much rather just use 3G and then Plug the, the one, t- you know, those few times where I'm like, God, uh, having a lot of speed right now would be really good. I could switch, you know, turn on LTE and then use it and realize that my battery is going to suffer as a well, result of it. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with getting a backup battery to have on hand yeah, like, to totally. carry with you or put in your, like, I've got like in my bag, I have my little pack of like, you know, my, you know, power cable and my mouse and the, the the display converter for my laptop and throw an extra battery in there that's fine when you're on the road that sort of thing but the the double life batteries that add the girth that add, you know like yeah. you shouldn't have to do that it's uh, yeah it's frustrating well and that that wreaks havoc with you know if you have accessories like if you have a car mount yep. or mm-hmm. anything like mm-hmm. that it, it makes it almost unusable for things like that as well but you know it also has this fancy little thing a uh, little kickstand on the back <laughs> so I, you can watch I, I don't i don't get it <laughs> Which I completely forgot about. But hey, I guess if I was doing an app review, I could just go like Look at that. Yeah, there you it's go. A little, yeah. yeah, there you go. A little kickstand. Then, but it makes it, it's it's not as easy as putting it in this thing, yeah. though. But um, yeah, overall, I, I really like it. And I'm having a great time with it. And it's nice to kind of have some screen real estate and have it mm-hmm. be fast <laughs> and not laggy and everything. I haven't rooted it yet. I do think that I probably will eventually, just because I I miss some of those root apps, including the app that I'm going to be talking about on in the arena today, which means that I'm going to, going to be uh, reviewing today's arena app on my old Motorola Droid. <laughs> <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Wah, wah, wah. So okay, we didn't exactly lose the bet because you it's are going to get it. Yeah, you are going to get a new phone. Yes. So because your the the dream phone has not come out yet. So our our bets are still in play, right? Right? Yes. Is that? Uh, I would say your Ron, bets are still in play. Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> because it's just like it's like it's a, I, I'm laughing at the the combination of the grasping at straws for the bet <laughs> and also Jason's non-committalness to actually settle on yes, this is my phone. Yeah. I don't is, like losing, true. so <laughs> I don't. It's like And Eileen doesn't tapping, like losing. It's tapping in on two of your neuroses <laughs> that I find fascinating. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, no. So the plan, the plan is that I'm using this until <laughs> the dream. There, there, there's the bionic that's that's supposedly coming out by the end of the summer, right? That's two months, and I can kind of see if that's really the one. Right now, I feel pretty satisfied. I've got this thing to use. My <laughs> wife doesn't care. If like a really amazing ice cream sandwich phone is coming out by the end of the year, sure, I might wait for that too. I it's don't like know. It's like you're waiting for Howard Hughes to rise from the grave and design a brand new kind of phone just for you. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm waiting for that. That's true. Oh, man. I'll be happy until that happens. Okay, so, so I anyways, just so want to happy. clarify our bets are not the bets Done. are still valid. And yes. also, I would like bonus points for working in a Howard Hughes reference. So there you go. <laughs> oh, anyway, come so. on. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but my was the bionic. Was that yours, too? I, well, yes, we were both oh, on the bionic. So oh, so we don't, we no win. bet at all. Well, yeah. unless we both lose. Right. Well, I think I think that's already happened today. <laughs> no, it didn't <laughs> happen. It's a technicality. We all yeah. lose today, except Jason. Yeah, that's I, right. You know what? I lost because winner, I thought right he was going to get the charge. I didn't think the he was going to get the the, the big loser here is Jason's wife, who's rocking a Motorola <laughs> Droid, and somehow is fine with it. <laughs> hey, she's she's fine with it. She loves it. Oh, she, she I'm going to get you this new phone that I'll use, and then you can use my old crappy phone. Oh, boy. Oh, the big loser All is right. Jason's wife. Are you going <laughs> to tell her that Ron said that? Boy, Ron no, said probably he was the not. loser in this. I just, I, I'm speechless. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> All right, Eileen, you go. I don't know if I can. You, that you, was you the have best segment news. ever. You have good news. I thought I had good news, but I guess I didn't. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I, uh, I got a nook. And I got a nook because I wanted to get some cred since I hadn't rooted my phone yet. And um, Color did you get? I got the nook color. Awesome. And uh, I have it right here. Um, and is it a nice little? Is it a nice little form factor? It's like, got a nice little form factor. I really like holding it like that. You know, it's very. You know, it's a little heavier than I thought it would be. I mean, it's definitely heavier than the Kindle. I like and, the little. I like the little hook at the bottom. If you have a yeah. carabiner, you can attach it to your waist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah has it might be a little a... weird to do that, <laughs> but um, has anyone come up with a really good like reason why that hook is there? Is it just to um, give it a visual? Well, there splash is or... the. You know what it is? It's the S S D card. Micro S D card is right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So well, I feel like you could have done that without the little hook. Yeah. I feel like yeah. that hook is, the hook is screaming well, to be and latched then, on. And then something. it says there, Nook. Oh, that's why they did it, the inscription. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, anyways. anyways. Um, so, this weekend, I, uh, I had a little project. And I think I basically, it was sort of 50% uh, success, 50% fail. And I'll tell you why. Um, what I got here is honeycomb. Oh, look at that. Nook. That is honeycomb. Guess who did a little terminal? Me. I rocked it a little bit. Um, <laughs> I you know, I didn't actually uh, root the device. Um, it is on the SD card. Everything is um, uh, it's booted through the SD card. I didn't want to mess with the Barnes & Noble Nook. And my first time rooting, I didn't want to brick the entire uh, unit, which... I don't know. Maybe Wait, I just didn't so, have enough uh, faith in myself. So you rooted it, but it's running from the SD card. So the actual OS, the actual drive within the Nook is not rooted. That's correct. You're just booting which, off the SD card. Yeah. That's right. I've heard of that. The Nook which color allows is, you to do that. Yeah. And yeah, so which once, is cool because it's like it lets you tinker with that without screwing up the whole device. That's mm -hmm. what I was afraid of, at least on yeah. my first try. And when I pop out the SD card, it'll relaunch the regular Barnes & Noble you know, uh, mm -hmm. OS that comes with it so uh let's just take a look here now um what i did was i used uh deeper blue in the uh, xda forums um flash the sd card um i just you just need a 4g or 8g class 4 card uh you need a card reader because that's what you're that's what mm -hmm. you're modding um and then you have to download a specific image disk file uh it's a nook honey image file and then there was a few terminal commands and um jason there's <laughs> there's a flicker um um, oh yes, on there. Here we go. You can see my. Um, uh, I've, I've I made a few mistakes, <laughs> and then what, you know it was really wonky. I had to move the image file off my desktop into a folder, and then had to move it out, and then to had I moved into another folder, and then it finally took. It was kind of it was like really. I thought you're supposed to see it wherever I go, um, and even though I put it in, I I put it out of a folder, and then I put it back in, and I put it back out, and then I put it back in the same folder, like. <laughs> 20 minutes later, it finally worked. And all I had to do was a few lines, you know, in, in terminal. And um, then I basically inserted the SD 
card and then uh, powered up and then I got Honeycomb. Now, the next step was to, because it doesn't include the Android market, there was another line of oh, code right. I had to run and uh, do all of this. Now, for whatever reason, my computer or terminal was not recognizing um, the Nook. So I couldn't do that. Um, and I tried that for hours and I tried different, I was on the forums and I tried different workarounds and for whatever reason it wasn't working. Maybe I just need a Windows machine to do it and I didn't mm -hmm. have one at home, whatever. So I gave up because I finally said, you know what, I can get Amazon. I can get the Amazon App Store. I can use um, uh, App Store. I can get do get jar to get cut the rope, which is what I did. So that, you know, the only thing I'm missing now is Gmail, is Google stuff. So mm -hmm. I want the calendar. I want the mail. I don't really need the maps I have my phone for that um, so I'm just kind of missing that but if you look it's basically honeycomb let me let me do um see I will say that it's a little slow and it's a little buggy sometimes I have to force quit I haven't put a lot of stuff on here yet um, and what's yeah, interesting kind of sticks a little bit it does and what's interesting is that you know it partitions the SD card so I'm not mm -hmm. really using the full four gigs of it is the image and then just a few you know megabytes are the apps and I'm not really using the rest of it so mm -hmm. I'm kind of like I don't know, how do I get around that maybe somebody can help me with that um, and there are many other I think, ways. I, 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 yeah. I think the the Nook processing power also is a little it's a little yeah. slower. That yeah, I think that's because it's a, such a cheap device. Yeah. Not cheap in terms of quality, but you know, like it's affordable. So it's probably yeah, I I forget the specs are, but I don't think it's the top of the line processor. Right. So yeah. there it is. Dr. I mean, Baltazar in the chat room also mentions that it could the speed could be uh, the read off of the SD card. Yeah. You know, versus that's the what I was thinking yeah. too. At the same time, um, there is uh, mods to put gingerbread on the Nook, and I'm going to show you that in a little bit. And I think. It runs a lot snappier, and they're also uh, using the SD card. Well, I'll show you that in a little bit, and I think it just runs faster. Um, my experience, though, it's fine. I mean, the web browser I actually don't have Wi-Fi uh, connected. I should probably try and do that right now. Um, it's a little slow. It's a little buggy. I think um, what I'm actually going to end up doing is. Uh, eliminating uh, honeycomb on this and put gingerbread on it yeah. because there's some uh, mods that allow you to have a, automatically the an, uh, Android marketplace and Netflix and Hulu so uh, I'm gonna try those out because um, while it's fine it's just there's the keyboard there I'm trying to connect to see look at the the non-responsiveness Oh, yeah. Every once in a while, so I have to go down. Hitting it, hitting it. Yeah. Finally. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, I bet they work out a lot of those bugs, though. As, eventually, as yeah. Deeper Blue is supposed to come out with more. a 3.1 um, update, and that'll be good. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll show you Cut the Rope later when we get to that. But um, look, I've got the Kindle app on here. <laughs> <laughs> I made a point to download that specifically, and then, you know, I've got the Amazon App Store. So, yeah, it takes a little bit long to, to load, and then it kind of circles, and no, 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 But, you know, it's not so bad, actually. It's kind of cool, and I actually feel excited that I was able to do this on my own. That's it didn't awesome. take too long. Now, getting the Android Marketplace was a pain, and I didn't get that done. I wish I would have gotten that, but um, it's my first step, so, um, you know, thank yay, that's I guess. A, that's great. Are, okay. So, are you going to go the next step? and actually uh, root the, the drive itself? I don't know if I want to. I like the Barnes & Noble interface. You know, I like this as a... I actually really dig the uh, the e-reader itself. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if I will do that. Um, now, this is uh, Tony Wang. This is his... One of, our um, editors. one of our editors. upstairs. And let me double check here. Tony used Auto Neuter 3.0, and uh, he also installed it on the SD card. Uh, but eventually it is on the Nook, he said. Okay, so sorry, guys. So he's got gingerbread going, and let me, there we go, there we go, he's got uh, widgets already, there's pulse, it's, it's moving pretty fast here as I'm, you know, going through this. Yeah, I've, I've heard cool. gingerbread on the Nook is great. Yeah, and he's got, look at all the apps that he's got on here. Nice. I think, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to have to go his route instead and uh, use gingerbread, uh, and I'll report back. There's, there's, oh, and that, look, when he pops up, he's got some of the Nook settings here. Mm -hmm. Now this Yeah, is it could be a modified version of the Nook. Yeah. Exactly. Let's see yeah, how. that's great. Oh, and this is the actual Nook interface. I like this. Well, that's like the best of both worlds. There yeah. you go. Yeah. And mm. it's all on the SD card. So, mm. um, yeah, maybe I'll have to go the Tony, Tony Wang route. So cool. I don't know. It was a fun experiment, and I'm I'm still working on it. And um, I don't know. I I it was fun. 
<laughs> now That's I awesome. feel That's now I feel confident um, to kind of do my own uh, to uh, root my phone. Um, the one thing I'm still working on is fixing my tab, and um, I'll report Your back. Your Galaxy tab. That I'll is, report uh, back. <laughs> What's the ongoing? Totally issue out of commission thing? right now. Yeah. Which is out of curiosity, sad. how many hours total spent on this Nook project? Uh, just to put honeycomb on it, probably a half hour. But then. Um, Unless you count the drive to Best Buy when I didn't realize I needed a micro SD card and a micro oh, no. <laughs> that doesn't really count. That's so half an hour to put that on, be, only because I'm the new. It, it probably would take somebody ten minutes right. who does this normally, but it took me half an hour because I was like reading the directions and making sure I was doing yeah, everything right. Sure and then right. I spent two hours trying to get the Android Marketplace. This was like you know after midnight, and I said, forget it, I'm done. I don't need it. I've got it. That, that, that's that's when you reach that <laughs> that, that uh, diminishing returns based on yeah. the work. Yeah, you're, right. You're yeah, just like, I, I need to stop and go to bed now. Yeah, <laughs> I mean after reading everyone workarounds and not getting it to work I thought okay something's wrong here I'm I, I'm doing something wrong uh, and I didn't they you know I didn't know how to do the path um, uh, command so I was doing it a different way and nah, you know I'm not an expert so I was trying to do it for the first time eventually I'll get it I think cool but that's it that was my little project this but weekend. that's awesome that's awesome let us know how the gingerbread switch goes as yes. well <laughs> um, so we want to just just mention really quick uh, that we, we got an email, Eileen and I. We were at Google I.O., of course, mm -hmm. and uh, while we were there, they said that everybody was getting uh, Chromebooks. We got an email last week that basically said we could sign up and get our Chromebooks, the Samsung Series 5 3G Chromebook in Arctic White, which, of course, Amazon right now, I'm sure, got pummeled with, so they're totally out of stock. So basically, both of us uh, are, I think, registered to receive these at mm -hmm. some point in the future. Uh, but yeah, we just thought we'd mention probably aren't going to do a lot of Chromebook coverage on yeah. the show. It's just, it's not Android. It's a different track. At Google I.O. there was the Chrome track, there was the Android track. This is all about Android, so I kind of feel like what I'll do is I'll use the Chromebook on the show. Because I know some people have been like, why are you using my Yeah. Well, these are my, this is my computer. I mean, sorry. Yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> but I'd like to use it on the show. So. Yeah. So we'll, we'll try and do that. But uh, anyways, we'll be getting those soon, so that'll be exciting. Uh, so you probably won't hear a, a huge amount about Chromebook uh, development and all that kind of stuff, just to answer some of those emails that we got. Mm -hmm. um, Eileen, we have an email. Why yeah. don't you take that? Quick email feedback from last week. Um, Jason Applebaum, developer, was here. And a lot of you loved him, and we'll have him back on the show. Um, this is from Simon uh, McDon McDonald, and he just says, I was listening to episode 13 and would like to thank you for the phone gap mention. I'm one of the contributors to this open source Source project with my core area being the Android Im implementation. One thing I wanted to clear up was one of the comments that was made about the apps looking generic. That's not 100% correct as you are purely limited to what you can do on HTML5, HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript skills. Toolkits like jQuery, Sencha, and Dojo have very good support for mobile widgets and you can make your apps look like native ones quite easily. The PhoneGap framework itself provides you a JavaScript API to access the native device features like geolocation, acceleration, contacts, um, etc. And as an extra benefit to developers, there is supported plugin infrastructure that allows you to expose more native functionality by creating your own plugin. Anyways, I could talk about this all day, so if you ever want to get more information on PhoneGap, don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you, Simon. So just, just a follow-up from last week. Yeah, and, uh, you know... <laughs> it's really for Jay Jason. <laughs> Jason Applebaum was the one that talked at, the, at length about this stuff, and we, we read the email, we were like, that, that's really good information. Yeah. It's coming from the source. The I don't really know <laughs> what I have to say about it, but I'm sure there are a lot of you listening who would want, uh, to, know who would want had, to know it. So yeah, and had the feedback, that. I guess, too. The irony is that is, is Jason even going to watch this? Is he going to hear this? I'm going to forward Applebaum. this email to Jason <laughs> yeah. Applebaum. That's yeah. what I'll do. He'll be <laughs> yeah. stoked. He'll yeah. be stoked. Um, let's see here. Let's move on then to our next segment. We have apps coming right up right now. <laughs> So I was super excited uh, today, actually, when I heard the news that uh, Hulu Plus is now available for Android, which is awesome because I just recently recommitted to Hulu Plus because oh, there's a wow. new show. Well, not a new show, but there's an old uh, British show called Misfits that I, that's, only, that's only available on Hulu. And uh, so I dusted off my Hulu Plus account. I've been watching it on my Xbox, uh, Xbox 360, uh, my TV. But now I, you know, now I could be on the on the go. I could be on the train. I could be on the bus, and I could pull up Hulu Plus on my Android phone. Um, um, I was really kind of impressed at the interface to the application. I don't know if you guys got a chance to download and take a look at it yet, but uh, it was I've 
got it right here. Mm. I always I always like it when an app doesn't look like every other app, and I feel like Hulu did that with this with this version. Um, if you go back to the home screen, actually, if you go to the main, uh, hit hit the back button there. Back mm. again. This is a great television. Back again. Oh, weird. <laughs> Should hit I the, just hit Hulu yeah. Plus? Oh, yeah, there this. you go. There you okay. go. Yeah, so you there just get a very go. simple, you know, do you want to choose TV, movies, or go into your queue, or you can look at your history, or you can search. Um, if you just hit TV, it will go into the, the TV section, and it will show you um, content that's available. Uh, it's serving up the next uh, episode of Misfits because that's the thing next in my queue, which is a nice kind of combination, as well as that's also a new release that came out today. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so it's very easy to just pull up an episode and just tap on it, and it just starts loading the video right, at, right and go. You don't have to do anything more than that. Um, you can log into your Hulu account, and so you can see your queue, and you can um, access everything that, that you normally do just through the Hulu website or any of the other Hulu apps. Uh, I was a little disappointed that it's phone only and not tablet, though. I tried installing it on my Zoom, and oh. it's not in the marketplace. So, yeah, so it's kind of sad there. But um, it's nice. I mean, now that after Netflix, now Hulu Plus coming to Android, it's like I really have no excuses not to watch things on my, fo on my phone now. Apparently, you have no excuse to watch lots of ads. Yeah, exactly. That's the other thing, too. Was, oh, sorry. Ads that are just ridiculous. There was actually, I was at the gym watching Hulu Plus on my iPad, and there were two minutes left in the show, and an ad break came up. Are you no. serious? No. Two like, minutes? Really? Two minutes left. I was like, really? I got to watch 30 seconds about Miller Genuine Draft? Really? But, um... Yes, yeah, but, but you do. That's the price. I mean, that's the price you got to pay. I yeah. can't complain. You know, people people watch our our shows and other things like that. It's all ad supported, so we gotta you know you gotta make the money where you can. But. Yeah, I guess I guess a lot of people have a problem with this because you pay for the Hulu Plus service and then to on top of that get the ads. You kind of feel like you're you're already paying, so why do you have to be exposed to the ads as well? But right. well, I mean, I guess only, that's what we do on cable. Yeah, you know, and, my only problem with Hulu Plus is that new shows aren't necessarily on Hulu Plus. I'm paying for Hulu Plus. Us. So uh, instead right. of see, watching it on the app, I have to go on the website to watch it. Yeah, that, that's the thing. I don't like that. Purposes. That's the, 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 the separating things between the web and, and like, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. It's only web only now. And it's like, why? Oh. I don't, I don't want to watch on the web. I've got all these different versions and things like that. You might want to stop it because this is a mature oh, show. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Can you scrub <laughs> I, through it? I haven't it? seen the episode, so I don't know what's going to happen. So. <laughs> Sorry, Ron. Spoiler alert. <laughs> can you scrub through the uh, uh, the episode pretty well on here? Yeah, yeah. You, okay. you can scrub, scrub through it. It works It works the same as, as you would expect it. I mean, it's, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's a nice little app. It's pretty good. And, but it's really interesting because I really kind of dismissed Hulu and I never really used it until Misfits, the only place I could watch Misfits was on Hulu and now I had a reason to use it. So it, it just shows that balance of content and a platform that if they have the content I want, I'm actually going to use it. So it's good to see they have the apps there. So good. Nice. But, so that's Hulu Plus. It's in the marketplace. You can install hmm. it right now. And uh, I guess what? Hulu Plus, seven ninety nine a month. No commitment, they say. Um, I don't know. Never been too lured into the Hulu Plus world. But uh, I think I think I, I signed up for it when I think I signed up. I, somebody sent me like a free month trial, mm -hmm. and I told it. And hook, line, and sinker. I signed up for it, and then I just have never canceled it. So. Nice. All right. I'm telling you, I'm gonna go bankrupt because of all these micropayments. <laughs> I hear you. Little two ninety nine here, seven ninety nine there, ninety nine cents there, and I'm gonna be poor. <laughs> Right on. Well, what you got, Eileen? Well, actually, uh, exclusively on the Get Jar Marketplace uh, came out Cut the Rope, which was a famous uh, I iOS game. And finally glad to have it on uh, Android. And I'm going to try and show you Cut the Rope on my Nook. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, good idea. Which I really, uh, there it is. This, this game has, has overtaken my life. Tell us about it, Ron. I'm like on level 85. You have no joke. What? Not even uh, exaggerating. Oops, I messed up. It's hard to play. Oh, oh no, it's I didn't like too mess up. Physics game, right? Yeah, so you've got these stars, and they're connected to the ropes, and you got to cut them, and then you got to eventually put it into, um, let's play the next, into, is this a frog? It's a frog, It's, right? a, little, it's a little alien it's or something. A, it's like a, 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 it looks like an amphibian to me. Whoop, there so, yeah, we so you go. So you got Sorry. candy hanging from a rope, and yep. you got to have the candy hit the stars to get the full stars but then yeah. there's all sorts of physics involved like if the rope has a lot of tension it will bounce back and there's yeah. like other and as you go on further levels there are other little devices oh. and things like oh you just missed it i did yeah. start over okay like angry birds you just start over yep it's very angry birdsian oh 
I got this done already, and I was just trying to show you. But the music is really great. The uh, the touch sensitivity is awesome, and it's free right now uh, at GetJar. And they got the exclusive, not Amazon. Uh, didn't come out to the uh, Android marketplace. Right so I think it's really cool that we could get our apps in different places. Um, and uh, a I lot think of people would see that as a disadvantage. I, I totally agree, though. I, I think you know, if if there are more marketplaces, you have more of an opportunity. Like Amazon is the prime uh, you know example of mm -hmm. offering you for free what you might have to pay for elsewhere because they've worked out those deals to have the daily free app so yeah you know it's more competition the um, only thing i don't like about the android marketplace and and, and someone correct me if i'm wrong the here amazon? uh no i'm sorry the amazon marketplace is when there's updates i don't know what the updates are yeah have you noticed it that? just says update this app and, i and maybe right. most of you don't care but i really like to know what my updates are i want to know what the changes are and i don't see that anywhere uh, in the store, where whereas in the Android marketplace, you know, you get this whole laundry you get list. Well, we center. did this. You, you know. might not want to upgrade to that particular version. It might do exactly. something in the change yeah. that you. Yeah, don't want so to. I want to see that. That's you. the one thing. Publish I don't your like. personal info on Twitter. If you update this app, it will <laughs> steal all of your data and send it to China. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> Had I known, I wouldn't have updated it. But no. <laughs> right on. All right. Well, let's do another email here. Yep. Um, let's see here. This is from Adam in Nashville, who writes: I switched from Windows Mobile. 6.1 to a Nexus One about a year ago. One of the features I had with my old phone was the ability to automatically record every phone call, but I've yet to find a reliable free app for Android that doesn't require you to use the speaker phone. Mm. Uh, and he says, P.S., contrary to what most people believe, federal <laughs> law specifically allows you to record your own conversations without having to notify the other parties. I, I always assumed it was the other way around, but um, he says, California and Maryland state laws have a provision that requires notification but the state I live in does not. In fact, most states mirror federal law. I mention this because every time I ask on a forum, I get a, oh my God, illegals <laughs> response by the third post. And then the thread turns into a discussion of wiretapping law. I can understand the frustration <laughs> there. That's hilarious. Do you guys uh, ever feel like you need to record calls? Uh, no. Yeah, I don't either. I, I but don't. there are a section of people that do, like... Um, uh, Adam in I'm sure there are, yeah I'm sure there are reasons uh, to, to record calls I, I I mean it's probably because we live in California that I always just assumed that it was illegal to do that without well, notifying I, well I could see that I mean depending on what you do if you're a journalist I could see having to record calls to go back to get quotes sure. and things like that yeah I mean totally. I could see reasons being I mean you know I, I record calls via Skype that I'm doing for interviews and stuff like that just because I have to if, if I wasn't using Skype I'd, I guess I would use it on the phone too that's true know. that's a really I guess good I should point. record my own customer service calls when I call and hey, that's you know, not a hey, bad that's not a bad um, reason. you know nothing, nothing um, wrong with that either yeah well I got conned um, several years ago by s a carrier I won't say who. Actually, actually, and uh, they like, well, not conned. conned. I should just—that's a bad word. I just—they misled me. They told me that my contract was up, and I should know when my contract is up. And so I just said, "Oh, great. Well, I'm just going to cancel my contract." Then I got charged later when I canceled my contract because it wasn't actually up. But the person on the line, you know, shouldn't have told me that in the first place. And I wish I had that recording, so I complained and. Whatever. I'm right there with you. There was I was I was checking into a hotel and I was on and my reservation got canceled and I was on the phone with the loyalty program and ah. he was telling me that he was telling me that uh, they don't understand why my reservation was canceled but I could go to another hotel because the hotel I was trying to get into was fully booked but I would have to pay a hundred and fifty dollar cancellation fee oh. for ah. the reservation that was canceled and I nearly lost it. I wish I had recorded that call because I could have sent it to them as proof of uh, yeah. bad customer service. Yeah. So, so there are so. some you know, customer service. That's a good reason to need the, yeah. these there apps. Go. But anyways, um, you have some answers, right? Um, <laughs> well, um, yeah, I mean, there, there were a couple of options um, that, that we were kind of looking into. One of them is called Total Recall, and I couldn't find a market link for this, even though on their, their website specifically, they have a link that says it goes to the market, but it actually doesn't. It goes to here. It's a $10 mm. app, and just reading through the comments on, on the site itself, $10 A is pretty steep, um, unless it does it really well, but you know, a lot of the reviews down at the bottom just did not look very good. 659 comments, and a lot lot of the ones that I read just either said that it didn't work or or they wanted to uninstall it wanted a refund there was no way to get a refund which is kind of a, a risk you take I guess when you're buying apps not in a particular marketplace it's one thing that a marketplace does for you it has rules and regulations built into it so if you don't like what you get uh, you can easily get your money back uh, so I'm not saying that it's a bad app I, I haven't used it comments seem to kind of paint it uh, not in the most positive way so that's total recall there's another one called record call which is in the marketplace and 
and uh, this is free. And uh, again, uh, two and a half stars maybe from uh, reviewers. And it also says that it mutes your side of the call a lot of the time, which makes it pretty useless. Uh, and it does use the speakerphone, as Adam said he didn't want to do. But we found one that was called Record My Call. And this one is free. It gets good ratings in the uh, Android market. And a lot of the reviews say that it does exactly what he's looking for. Um, and, you know, doesn't require it to be over the speakerphone in order to do the recording. So I don't know, Adam, if you've already found this or if this is one that you've tried and it actually didn't work for what you were using. And if that's the case, let us know a at twit.tv. Uh, but maybe this will work for you and anybody else that's looking to do this. Record my call in the Android market. Good luck. Yeah, let good us luck. know. Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, I've just never thought to, to do that on my Android phone. Uh, we'll take a quick break here and thank our sponsor, Netflix. Uh, this episode of All About Android is brought to you by Netflix, which streams thousands of TV episodes and movies directly to you instantly, which means you save time, money, and hassle. There are several uh, easy ways to install uh, and instantly access streaming movies and TV shows hmm. with Netflix. You can watch these on your Mac, your PC, iPad, some Android devices. You can watch on your iPad iPhone, a gaming console, Xbox 360, PS3, Nintendo Wii, the Roku, Apple TV. There's just tons of devices that allow you to watch Netflix nowadays, and that list is just growing and growing. Um, and you can basically watch these instantly. You can launch them right from uh, the app or from your browser and play them right away. Here's Shutter Island. Maybe I'll go ahead and watch a movie while I'm, while I'm going here. <laughs> Pardon me while I need I, to watch this movie. I haven't while seen I watch it yet. A movie. Uh, whichever way you choose to access Netflix, you can watch as many movies and TV. Oh, no, Silverlight update. Well, I have never done that on this PC, so I'm not surprised. Uh, you can watch as many movies and TV shows as you want anytime you want. You can cancel anytime, and you can try Netflix today for 30 days free. Go to Netflix.com slash twit, and you can sign up for a 30-day free trial. Again, that's Netflix.com slash twit, and uh, check it out. I've been very, very happy for many years with Netflix. Me too. And I think you will too. So I'm thank watching... you for uh, sponsoring Twit and all about Android. Thank you, Netflix. Yeah, I'm watching Bones. Bones. I'm still in the in the middle of Buffy, but maybe I just like David Boreanaz. I decided to start <laughs> watching Bones. So. I told you. I told you he went to my college, right? He did. He did. Yeah. Oh. Did I you wasn't know? there at the time. Oh, I was like, did you there. know? Yeah. No, I didn't. Uh, yeah. So. He seems was, like he a character. I saw him at Comic Con uh, a couple of years ago, talking about Bones, and um, uh, he was just—he was very energetic. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> That's All right. My David Boreanaz story. Boom. And with that, maybe we'll run into him in the arena. You think? To enter, one lives. Android arena. That, that was him. David Boreanaz was in the background. That was him. Yeah. He's in the seats. Don't Where you is, know? Oh, yeah, I see him. Fire there he is. David yeah. There he is right there. <laughs> wow, I never, I never noticed that before. That's amazing. Uh, so, all right. So this week in the arena, uh, well, first of all, let's uh, check in on oh, last yeah. week. Oh, yeah, what happened last week? Last week we covered the launchers. Tragedy. I, I got destroyed. What, uh, what happened? Oh, really? I, uh, <gasps> I'm looking at this no for the way. first time. Let's see here. <laughs> And what was your favorite launcher from the ones shown in episode 13? It appears that Go Launcher EX is the winner uh, with 47% of the votes. ADW Launcher comes in second at 42. Regina 3D Launcher comes in third <laughs> with 11%. Yeah. But I thought that was a fine new uh, hey, I, pick. I took a risk. I went for an unknown. I went for a rookie. You know, it's you gotta take a risk. Somebody's got to do it. I'm sure. Yep. I'm sure there's a there's a risk being taken in today's yes. uh, in yeah. arena. And I and as we noted, Launcher Pro was um, reviewed the week before. Um, we know that would have won over you know overwhelmingly yeah. so. Well, and it would have um, just been repetitious had we talked about Launcher Pro again for ten minutes exactly. or whatever. So <laughs> so that's why it wasn't included in our arena. But right. uh, Kevin Purdy reviewed that a couple weeks ago. That's right. All right, so this week we are doing a different type of app. We're doing backup apps. And I think we realized when we set this, when we set this and started kind of looking at the landscape of backup apps on Android, we realized that there are a lot of different types of backup you can be talking about. Mm -hmm. You can be talking about, you know, backup to the cloud. Mm -hmm. You can talk about backup, uh, you know, your photos and your music uh, somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, onto your SD card. Or you can 
back up like Im an image of your your OS and uh, be able to restore that later. So you you know, and that's very popular in the the root side of things. Uh, so there's a lot of different ones, and I think the three uh, apps that we're going to talk about today are definitely uh, very different from each other. So I guess let's start with you, Eileen. All right. Before I get into talking about my app, which is Sprite Backup, and it's 4.99 in the uh, marketplace, um, I didn't back up before. I don't have a rooted device, as you all know. So um, what I feel was really really important for me to um, back up where my photos and my music and I do that in different ways my photos you guys know I use drop in and I've been backing it up to Dropbox mm -hmm. um, and uh, I also have a different app called lookout which I think I'm going to talk about when we talk about you know security and remote wiping and stuff like that and that's been suggested to me as well um, and uh, my videos, I don't really take that many videos on my phone so when I back those up I just kind of you know take it off my phone and put it, I don't know, on Dropbox or something like that. Uh, now, there's a lot of people who don't like Dropbox for security reasons. They've been in the news lately, so I can totally understand that. Um, and then my contacts, everything else is Google, you know? So um, I, I'm guessing that there's just a, I don't know, I, I should be more thorough about backing up my device in general. So this is a really good exercise. And in particular, app settings and things like that. Um, the game Battleheart that I reviewed several weeks ago, um, you know, I've been told that Titanium Backup would be a really good way to keep this um, my, my, my level play. Um, and I never got a chance to use it and I was gonna try, but then I'd have to root the tab and then my tab died so that's a long story but that's c kind of the thing that i would want to keep want backup for yeah want backup for covered. something like that yeah that's something that's not covered which i think that's one of them um i don't really know if Spr okay first of all um here here's sprite backup and um what i'm gonna do oh come on sprite there we go um this was recommended to me last week when we were kind of brainstorming post show as to what to use because i just i didn't use anything. So mm -hmm. I thought this was interesting. Um, the backup here, you got backup restore, you can schedule as well. You could back up to your own device if you have room, a storage card, box.net or Dropbox. And um, I tried uh, the box.net and Dropbox, and I don't have that big of a, an account on box.net, so I only did certain settings. But um, let's see, if I go into box.net here, I'll show you that. Um, and then let's see. Let's see, let me replace. Uh, that was a test there that I did. This should show up soon. All the different applications, settings, uh, you know, all the check boxes that you can um, back up. So you can restore your backups, you can reinstall. Um, again, you could uh, back up to your PC, FTP, you could schedule. There's inscription, encryption options. I don't know why this is taking so long. I love live demos. Um, uh, the system settings, there are, uh, let's see here, you could back up your, your wallpaper, your ringtones, your notification volumes, I mean, just, it gets to the nitty gritty. Uh, call volumes, <laughs> user dictionaries, alarms, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I could go on and on. Now, um, what's unsettling is the fact that I couldn't upload my uh, videos and I only had one video to upload and it wouldn't upload to either box.net or Dropbox. I don't know if it was Dropbox or actually Sprite. Um, here we go. Now you could see here I've checked application settings, bookmarks, not calendar because I know that's booked uh, already or that's already backed up my call log, contacts, no because I have that on uh, Google. Some of my text me or my messages, I didn't pick multimedia just in case. I just was kind of doing a sample. Music, I've got Google Music, mm -hmm. Amazon. I. You know, I've already got several cloud lockers, so I'm fine. Again, photos, I'm, I'm done there. Uh, system settings, I guess I could have done that, but I didn't choose. And then there's video. So these are the selections that you could back up uh, using Sprite. And it only takes a, a few minutes to do, so let's just continue and see how long that takes there. Um, and it overwrites the backup that's yep. already there? It does. And when I go into box.net, I see the file uh, right there. Um, and now... Another disconcerting thing is that I went into the marketplace and there's a lot of one-star reviews because it looks like it doesn't work for several phones. Um, I don't know, like the e, uh, HTC Evo 4G doesn't work for it. There's certain phones that it doesn't work for. There's no listing on the website as to which phones it works for and which phones it doesn't work for. Um, and so I, I guess I'm just a little concerned with this after reading. You know, I, I did the backup. It seemed to work. There was a couple kinks to it. Um, I'm fine with it. There are 198 five 
five star ratings and there's also 141 star ratings so i'm giving you a warning right now and for 4.95 wow. maybe you should be careful for it now again i'm only doing it for small items and um i'm not doing it for the whole kit and caboodle so um maybe that's why and this um software has been around for windows mobile and for palm uh it's so this isn't the first uh, platform that right had this on exactly so it seems to work for them but there are a lot of one stars doesn't work for froyo i mean i don't know mm. give or take what you want i'm just giving you the good and the bad um for what i used it for it seems to work fine um yeah it sounds like it, it's probably the kind of app that that works it, that that Selectively. does what you want it to do if it works with your device. Exactly. It's not that it doesn't do the things that you need it to do. It's just it's not working with every device out there. And exactly. if they don't spell that out right up in front, then, yeah, that's a bad user experience. Yeah. So, um, anyways, it, it does a lot of things, but it may not work for your phone. Just mm -hmm. that's the caveat there. But um, there were a few people uh, who suggested the app and who love it, and yeah, you know, who've been there using it much longer than yeah, who've been sure. using it much longer than than I have. So um, I think I'll just uh, toss it to <laughs> the next person. Lob it over <laughs> to me. Back it up to Jason. Like Wimbledon. Uh, all right. <laughs> Um, all right, cool. Well, I'm going to go in a completely different direction, um, just in the sense that the app that I chose, here's here's the funny thing about the app that I chose. My, <laughs> my new phone here, my Thunderbolt, isn't rooted, and the app that I chose is a root app. So I'm going to go ahead and get my demo on my old, you know, crappy phone. And uh, <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. Hopefully my phone doesn't die in the middle of it like it did last week. Uh, I'm, I uh, chose to do titanium backup for root. And you, there, if you go to the Android Marketplace, there's Titanium Backup for Root, which is free. Then there's Titanium Backup Pro, and it's a pro uh, pro version of the app, which is five dollars and ninety eight cents. It brings uh, added functionality uh, to the app, and I actually have the pro version. But I'll kind of give you give you a little indicator indication as far as what each version does for the most part. Um, so here is my phone that will not crash today. I hope. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and launch it. Uh, da -da -da -da, titanium backup. And here we go. So titanium backup uh, is for root because it actually gives you uh, further access into the file system of your Android phone. Access that if you don't have root, you don't necessarily uh, have the or an app doesn't have the ability to kind of get in there and and back up everything. This app can. Um, it's a total backup utility. It does apps. It does app data. It does system data. It can do all that stuff. You can wipe. You can restore. You can uninstall uh, just apps. You can do all that stuff for just app data, just system data, or any combination in between. Um, it allows you to do compression on your backups so that it can take up less space, which is nice. One really cool feature is that you can do scheduling of apps. So what you could do, and I actually never did this, but this is a really touted feature and a lot of people love to do this, is you can set up different app or different backups to occur at different times and you can give it different rules. So I could say backup you know, my system every morning at 2 a.m you know, when I'm asleep or whatever, uh, every morning at 2 a.m., have it overwrite all of my, uh, you know, all of my previous backups, except maybe you want to keep, uh, you know, multiple copies of a particular app's data or of your system data or whatever. So you could set those to backup up to three, you know, in the history, if that makes sense. You can basically have a history of your backups as well and do that selectively based on the jobs that you're running. Uh, you can actually use this to remove bloatware. Oh, I just totally backed out. Uh, bloatware or apps that you don't want. You could also just freeze them and hide them. So if you don't want to remove them entirely from the phone, you can just freeze them and hide them um, the thing about titanium backup is that there's a lot of stuff kind of buried within here and uh, let's see here I'll just go to do, 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 batch batch is kind of the area that I used the use the most on this old phone and essentially all of these different batch jobs I mean there's just a ton of them back up all your user apps back up all your system data uh, combination like I said of, of all of those you can restore everything or you can restore 
store selectively. Uh, move your user apps to the SD card. You can do SD card moves here, uh, whether the app has said that you can or not. You can move any app to the SD if you choose. Uh, move user apps to your internal memory. Uh, save the apps into into ROM. <laughs> I don't know why I would use that. Um, this <laughs> this little freeze defrost area is where you can kind of uh, choose to selectively freeze and hide certain apps that you just really don't want to see. So like on my Thunderbolt, uh, that's one thing that I had to get used to. It's not a stock experience. It's HTC Sense. There's a whole lot of crapware in there. Luckily, with Launcher Pro, I can hide things from view so that I don't see all that stuff. Uh, but this is like this is like taking it a step further. This is actually removing it so it doesn't take up space on your phone. And uh, you can also do that with system apps. One thing that I use this for that for on this phone particularly is I was not a fan of the stock car home app when you put your phone into the car dock. I wanted to use something different. And every time I tried to do it, even though I was setting defaults to launch the other one and not you know, the car home app, um, it would still ask me. And this allowed me to actually remove the car home app entirely. So it just never got confused on it. If I wanted to restore it later, I totally could. This app allows you to do that. Um, you can just do you know your mundane things like uninstall uh, a batch number of apps instead of doing them one by one. Uh, you can delete your backups, of course, to wipe them out. Though be careful if you do that because you know if something happens and you've deleted it, you can't restore it. Um, it just it does so much stuff. It's it's hard to list them out and and have you know have it be thorough. Um, the pro version specifically allows you to do backup verification. It also allows you to sync to Dropbox, multiple backups per app, um, incremental backup, which basically means that the first backup is complete afterward. So basically the first backup that you do is an entire backup. And then afterwards, it only auto backups uh, uh, apps that have changed in some way. So it doesn't do every single thing. It only It's smart enough to know whether it needs to do this app or that app. Um, and yeah, and the app freezer, I believe, is a pro version as well. But as you can see, it's really, really thorough. If I have a backup of this app, I would just click that and get my options, which it's hard to see in the screen. But you know, I can basically back it up, freeze it, uninstall it, wipe data, run the app, restore, and delete it. Uh, and that's for every single app on the phone. So, uh, so that's my app. I, again, I, you know, the pro version is five dollars ninety eight cents. I've used this app so many times that it is so incredibly worth it to me to have paid that, and I highly recommend it to you too. So, if you've got a rooted phone, I be surprised if you don't already have this but if you don't you should get it because it's a really good backup app and that's that all right ron cool my <sighs> turn i can breathe go <laughs> so when looking at the whole world of uh backups and things like that i wanted to take the approach kind of the exact opposite of yours jason which is okay my phone isn't rooted i want to get in the mindset of a normal user basically i always think of okay what if my mom is using this phone and she's got a, she wants to back up her data that sort of thing what is the kind of layman application um so i was looking around the marketplace and i found one uh called my backup uh, and it's by rare rareware um and there's a free version in the marketplace and there's a paid version my backup pro for 499 there's a little asterisk to that um which i want to touch on real quickly the free version is nice to to give a feel for what the app can do but there's it's a 30-day trial and you can't back up more than two meg and you can only restore to the same device like there are all these restrictions around it so what i would recommend is you try the free application if you want to get a feel for what it does how it works and then pony up the five bucks if you feel as if you can commit to it but i would not uh download the this free version and think it's going to be a total backup solution. So that's important to note. Um, that's a little gotcha that I would hate anybody to get into. But what's interesting about my, my backup pro is that it's dead simple. It's so easy. Um, if you open up the application, you just get instantly get this menu. Well, first you get to accept the EULA. Um, and it's going to walk you through. You need to set up a password and set up an account and all that sort of stuff, which um, hit cancel to so maybe get around it for now. Um, but uh, basically what happens is that you've got two options. If you hit backup, it's going to say, okay, do you want to back up um, applications and data or applications and media or data? So we're going to choose applications and media for now. And then it's going to let you choose whether you want to back it up to your local SD card or onto the online service. So now the online service is my backup 
Pro's own online service and that password thing that we skipped over, that's what you use in order to access your data. You set up an account with them and you're saving it up to their, to their kind of cloud-based service. Mm -hmm. So if you're sensitive about your data or you're mistrustful or you're not quite sure you want to upload it to somebody, even though they go through great lengths to tell you that it's secure and it's your own password and they give you a pin and all that sort of stuff, be warned that you're uploading your data somewhere else. So uh, if you're worried about that sort of thing, read the details, read the EULA, read all that sort of stuff. I vetted it out. It looks to be legit. It, I mean, oh, this has been downloaded. What was it in the marketplace? It says um, uh, over, uh, where is it? Over 500,000 to a million times. So it's Ooh. not like this is some fly by night kind of operation. Um, but knowing that if you are worried about your data being somewhere else, it's going to be up on their system. So think about that. But um, that said, if you are worried about that, you can back it up to your SD card and then you can take that file and take it off the SD card, put it on your laptop or put it on an external hard drive, put it in a safe place, put it on a USB key, hide it, bury it in the backyard. You can control it. <laughs> but, um, but so once you choose it, for this case, we'll choose local. Um, just to keep it simple. And then um, when you choose applications and uh, media, it gives you an option to whether you want to back up your apps or your photos. Oh, yeah. um, if you expand the apps menu, you get your whole list of applications. You could choose select them all, or you can just individually pick the ones that you want to back up, which is kind of neat because, you know, maybe I don't really care about backing up Cut the Rope, but I really want to back up my email um, application or whatever it might be. Um, the media side of things is a little more rough. Um, it's a little bit, bit of a misnomer when it says app, uh, applications and media because the only media you can save are photos. So, um, so, and uh, furthermore, when you go to select your photos, you can either select them all or the browsing of the photos is leaves a lot to be desired. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives these, you know, the arcane file names that come with the camera apps and every now and then it shows you a little icon size uh, thumbnail, but I can't see half those th thumbnails. I don't know what the photos are. So really, unless you're, if you're trying to individually pick the photos you're backing up, this isn't the app to go with. This is just right. a batch backup one right. um but if you hit cancel and back out and go to backup and then go to data uh this was kind of interesting um you can uh again select local and then you can select the types of data that you want to back up you can back up your contacts your call log your sms or mms messages your settings um your dictionary your calendar um and randomly every now and then some applications tie into this so for example i use ak notepad which is a notepad app mm -hmm. and for some reason ak notepad appears in this list of what can be backed up so what's curious is that what does it take for one app to say yes back up my data versus another app which is not available for example if i wanted to back up my tweets versus i want to back up the twitter data i have i can't with this application um, so it's kind of interesting to see what they're using to figure out to say, okay, this application can have data that can be backed up versus this one can't. Uh, but that said, if you're just looking for a way to back up your contacts or your text messages or anything like that, you select what you want, hit okay, and it saves the file out to the SD card, and then uh, there you go. So um, pretty simple. Uh, again, I think this is more for the, the layman or the, the novice. Um, you need to actually have backups oh, before yeah. you do anything else with it. Yeah, but so. um, once you back it up, you can easily restore stuff. You can manage it in, in regards where you can see what's in each backup. Um, you can view what's in it. And what's also kind of neat is you can set a schedule. So you can say, hey, listen, every every Friday at noon, back up my call log. Or every you know you can, ske you can schedule pretty much anything in the app. In the app that I can do, you can schedule the, the backup of it. So Awesome. Love this. So schedule. it's a neat little app. But just be warned that the free version isn't completely an unlocked version. They're definitely trying to tilt you towards the uh, 49 version. And what's interesting, which I didn't play with, is that they do have a root version um, called My Backup Root that is also free, which I'm not quite sure what the difference is with that because I don't have a root version, so maybe Jason can look at it. But for this purposes, this is a very highly rated app. It got It's a 4.3 of the marketplace. It seems to be legit. It seems to be cool. Um, you know, Again, for the more non-rooted, non-techy, you know, I want to get in and save every aspect of my phone. It's just the basic kind of, I'm going to make up, uh, back up my apps, back up my photos, back up my contacts, that sort of thing. So. Nice. Yeah, the root version looks like it does, you know, a lot of the same stuff as Titanium, including yeah. uh, backup of the APK files and data and market links that are associated with the apps. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this seems like a kind of a competitor to the uh, Titanium backup as far as uh, feature set. So yeah. if you like the, the approach of My Backup Pro, uh, this and and you are root. This might be the way to go as well. Well, fantastic. That's that's that. That is that. That is the, that is my backup. So give it a shot. I, I like Eileen. I don't use any backup applications, so this is a bit of an adventure for me. So um, I'm gonna try using my backup, and I'm gonna upgrade to the Pro and see how it goes. Nice. But. 
Awesome. Well, I'm I'm happy that uh, at least through doing this exercise, you know, more of us are backing up, and I, I hope that I hope that the listeners and the viewers uh, start backing up as well, because nothing sucks worse than losing stuff because you didn't back it up. That's exactly. one way to learn to start backing up. Yes. By the way, <laughs> and you want to avoid you want to avoid that. You don't want to be in the situation where oh, I didn't back up and I lost everything, and now I need to start. There's nothing worse than that. So yeah. be proactive. It's you know. So. Like yeah, yeah, I have to start there. my game over again. Again. Oh well. <laughs> It's a, it's a game. It's a game, and uh, you know, not some like crazy, you know, text message that has you know your this the that secret has, of life. Yeah, the information mm. that you know you got duped from a service provider, and you'd like to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I went back to that. All right, so uh, it's time for you to vote on your favorite backup solution uh, from this episode. So we have Sprite backup, Titanium backup, and my backup. You can do that by voting at poll.cm slash 2028 poll.cm slash 2028 and, and uh, a, let us know there was a few other uh, I, I made a call out to other people on Twitter um, and to see what their uh, um, suggestions were for backup and boy you guys awesome I love the feedback uh, Kevin Purdy said Nandroid mm -hmm. uh, you know about great. that one too right yeah Nandroid is if you have a rooted phone it, and you get into your uh, clock I believe it's clockwork recovery Nandroid is like basically take an image of my phone and save it to a file that so so at this particular moment my my phone state in its entirety is saved and if I ever you know my, my phone I, I destroy it somehow or I brick it or whatever I can go back in an Android and mm -hmm. flash that back up and it's right back where it, where it was at that point oh. so it's really powerful mm -hmm. uh, really okay. good yeah um, and I guess there were a few others from at real dude every time I install or update or new ROM I back up with ROM manager mm -hmm. and hot milk GT Tony Wang That's says <laughs> I back up <laughs> via Google for the contacts USB to laptop for photos so there's many different ways that you can uh, I heard about What's Astro that? manager I mean there's it just goes on and on. There's, and it depends on what you want to back up. If you're not doing a full phone backup, mm -hmm. um, so uh, I don't know. It, many, many different ways. I think overwhelmingly, though, it was funny that I felt like most people who responded to me had rooted phones and used titanium. That would be the, I would say, 80% of the just, re replies. It's, it's a really powerful app. But, yeah. I mean, not everybody's going to root just to, to have that kind of mm -hmm. control, you know? I had, to, I had to go back and say, now, if you don't have right. a rooted phone, <laughs> what do you use? Uh, and then I got different. That's where I got the really varying uh, Lookout responses. is one, right? Lookout There's, is one. It uh, backs up your photos and contacts um, and then uh, a few other things. And then uh, not necessarily applications, I don't remember. And you have to have the pro version for um, some of the more uh, deep-seated uh, right. backups. And then there's also remote wipe. I think of that almost more as security. It also detects any uh, malware mm -hmm. that you may be downloading. I actually have the free version on my phone. Once we get to security, that's the app I'm going to Oh, yeah, Talk totally. Yeah. That's the one I always hear about is look Lookout's out for security awesome. anyways. Yeah. It sounds like it does just a bunch of different mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, cool. Well, let's take one last email. Okay. Well, actually, before we do that, let's just next announce week. next week, because we always mean to announce it. We never do. Twitter clients. So we're doing Twitter. We did it in the uh, the beta episodes, but we haven't done it on the real show. So we're going to go ahead and do that next week, which actually we should also mention right now. Next week is actually this upcoming Friday. What is it? The first? Yeah. Um, the gonna, fourth is a holiday. So. Yes. In the United States, we are celebrating our Independence Day on next Monday, July the 4th. So we're going to do our show early. Only five days from now. That's right. This uh, upcoming Friday, yeah. 5 p.m. ish Pacific, mm -hmm. <laughs> live.twit.tv if you want to check it out live. And I'll be publishing it to the feed that night so you're gonna get it a little early and you won't get something the following monday so keep that double the android magic for double. your holiday weekend We're gonna in the double US. down so, double yeah. down your holiday there we go <laughs> all right well we got another email uh eileen go for it i think this is backup related too uh yes this is from casey who uh was listening to episode 12 and at the end kevin purdy was giving advice on uh ways to free up internal memory on the phone now uh, casey uses apps to sd and periodically uses the clear cache feature one thing he didn't mention uh, that I found out helped get my original Motodroid moving a little quicker was cleaning my call log and old text. I haven't really done that myself. After almost two years of having the droid, I had racked up quite a backlog of old text. Since I didn't want to delete them forever, a friend of mine recommended an app called SMS Backup Plus. I created a Gmail account called... Should I say... Shoot. <laughs> 
<laughs> or something like that and set up the app. I don't know if I should say yeah. the yeah, That's whatever. fine. That's fine. Yeah, no. <laughs> and so she, so she created a Gmail account for it, something like that, and set up the app. <laughs> Jason, you can probably edit that from the download. It takes a few minutes to back up all the text and call log, and they are stored in a G Gmail account. Rod, don't laugh anymore. So I can access all my old text from any computer for reference. The best thing is that it automatically threads conversations with a person, so all my texts with my mom, for example, show up in one long threaded email. I'm so sorry, Casey, nice. if I screwed things up. Uh, once I had that all backed up, I cleared out my messaging app and rebooted my phone. I found it made a surprising amount of difference in speeding up my Moto Droid's responsiveness. Just thought I'd share. Keep up the good work, guys. I'm so sorry, Casey. Um, I don't know if that's going to mess up your... Um, a, little, a little bit of overshare there in the email. <laughs> just... I'm so sorry. You know, we're going to read this. Don't fault. give us your information. <laughs> <laughs> she oh, overshared, man. or he, he or she overshared in their email. That's all. I'm sorry to interrupt you with that. No, no, no. It's fine. I just... No one else will hear it. I'll, I'll bleep it out. So Thank it's all you. good. It's it's all good. But that's Everybody a really cool. good tip, yeah. honestly. If you're Absolutely. looking for more speed, um, I didn't even think about texts and messaging and 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 whatnot. So um, absolutely, that all that data just bogs the phone down Bye -bye. for sure. There's a good chance that her that the example of the Gmail account because it's followed by or something like that. Oh. So, it's good chance. so those oh, are there's a good chance she gave me a fake one. Good. Yeah. Then maybe but it's I not didn't... entirely clear. It's I not. Know. We're not entirely clear, so we'll need to. Dude. Oh. <laughs> another LOL moment. That's all right. Oh, That's boy. all right. Uh, cool. Well, uh, I think, is that it? I think we're done. Yeah, that's it. All right, cool. Well, we hope that you've enjoyed uh, all this talk. This is a lot about backups today. My gosh, we got a lot of backup apps. That yeah, let us <laughs> hopefully know. Hopefully, you can follow all of those. I know. It was um, more than just three. I yeah, I got a ton of uh, information on Twitter from everybody. So um, you know, uh, you got to do what you got to do for, for what's right for you. <laughs> Listen, you just got to do what you got to do, and whatever, <laughs> I respect it, and it's totally cool. We won't just, judge you based on the backup app that you <laughs> use. We're it's here right. in San Francisco. We're open-minded. It's all cool. Please do don't do. judge me for my backup app. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Please that should judge. be the title. Yeah. Ron, uh, how can people find you? Uh, people can go to find me on Twitter, twitter.com slash ronxo. And if you look there in my bio, there's a link to my about me page, which is about me, about.me slash ronxo. You can find all the links to iFanboy and Graphically and all my other projects and things like that there. So check them all out. Awesome. And how about you, Eileen? Oh, I'm always on Twitter at Eileen TV. Yeah, you're addicted to Twitter. You're I love always Twitter. on it. I love the Twitter. Yeah. I don't love the Facebook, but I love the Twitter. <laughs> And you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Raygun01. So, uh, you know, once again, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you this upcoming Friday. Uh, you can check it out at live.twit.tv at 5 p.m. Pacific. Uh, send us an email, AAA at twit.tv. You can uh, leave us a voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. You can uh, hit us up on Twitter, at Android Show, and uh, find the show notes, twit.tv slash AAA. Thanks again for tuning in, you guys. We'll see you uh, this upcoming Friday. Bye. Thank you.